As we remember from yesterday, it's a simple subtraction problem on top and bottom. It helps you beforehand to label it, and please do so. I often go X, Y, X, Y. If you remember, he's the first X, he's the first Y, second X, second Y. And use your formula, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. If it helps you also beforehand, see how there's minus signs already built into the formula? You can actually go ahead and stick those in ahead of time so you won't forget them. So I'll put them in right there, right now. That way I know I'm not going to forget them. No way. So on top, what do I have? Y number 2, which is 7, minus Y number 1, which is 3. 7 and 3. What do I have on the bottom here? X2. X2 and X1. So what am I doing? X2 minus X1. And now I already subtract. 7 minus 3, we all know is 4. 4 minus 1, we all know is 3. And there's your answer. 4 over 3. You might say 1 <coughs> equals 4 over 3. It's important to remember today that slope is abbreviated with M. Probably one of the most important starting points today. Remember that slope is in. If I ask you what M is, I'm asking you about the slope. Alright, it's M is in magical or macaroon. Alright, M is slope. Look at our second one here. Some negative numbers in there. But again, put the negative signs in beforehand, you can't go wrong. Stick them in right here. Oh, you only left out. On top, I have y2 minus y1. What is my subtraction problem on top? Speak up louder, please. Negative 3. Seven. Minus. Right, so it was minus negative 7, right? But again, what happens when we subtract negative numbers? We are really adding. So what is negative 3 plus 7? It's a positive 4. All right, don't put 10. 10 is wrong. On bottom. Last call for the 515 activity bus. That bus comes every day at 5.15. <laughs> on the bottom, x2 minus x1. What's the subtraction problem there? Right, so it's negative 11 minus negative 3. But he's right, when you subtract a negative number, you're really adding. So what is, be careful here. What is negative 11 plus 3? What do you got a number up? Sorry. It's negative 6. Well, you got the 11. You're right, you're right, you're right. It's negative 6. 6. 6. You're right. That's what I thought that. What's negative 6 plus 3? Yeah, negative 3. 3. What's 2, 3? What is it? Negative 3. Negative 3. Negative three. It's, it's, it's 10. 10. Right, what are those? It's negative. This is all like. This is all. Who are you listening to? <laughs> Somebody, somebody said that, didn't they? This is X. It's going to be negative 6. This is negative, negative 6 10. minus 10. Somebody yeah. let me astray there. Now they're getting quiet. <laughs> That's cool. All right. What is negative 6 minus 10? Negative 16. It's negative 16. Can I leave that like that, though? No. <laughs> I have to reduce that. What is 4 or negative 3 reduced to? 2. 2 and 8. Two and four. These both divide by four, right? So we have one over a negative four. There you are. They're going to mark four over sixteen wrong, no matter where you are, whether it be in a test in here or the ECA. They'll mark that wrong. What will not get marked wrong is one over negative four. That's perfect. Last one. Let me clear a little space out here for you. Our last problem, again, 
I always put my negative signs in so I don't leave them out. What's my special problem on top? I'm so glad the internet table over there. Nice job. What do I have on the bottom now? Negative seven, positive. Minus negative four. Negative seven minus negative four. And you're right, Clarissa. We're going to change the positive, so we should trash in a negative number there. Four. Now that's where I got that from. What's negative 11 plus three? Negative seven. Negative eight, close. Negative eight. What? <laughs> <laughs> And then what's the negative 7 plus 4? Oh, negative 3. Negative 3. Nice job. What happens when you do negatives in a fraction, though? Can you leave it like that? No. What are you making? 2. 2. No. What's the problem there? Negative 8 over negative 3. Positive 8 over positive 3. Positive 8 over positive 3. All right, we can't leave two negatives. That is wonderful. Eight and three, do not have any common factors. And there we are. Okay. Hopefully you feel comfortable with that. That is the first step of a much more complicated process. Today's process is what I would say maybe one of the hardest problems you'll see in all of algebra one. It is write the equation of a line through two points. And what's challenging is that it's a three-step problem. Everyone I found has a step they don't like, whether it be the beginning or the end. So, our first step is find the slope. We've been doing that, right? Have plenty of practice with that. Good more practice today. If you're not good with it yet, you have plenty of practice. Then we're going to use our slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, to find the value of b. This one's a little tricky, I won't lie to you. The last step, which is pretty straightforward, is to write the equation. So, let's look at example number one here. Make sure you follow as closely every step. It's important in this to ask questions as they come. Don't wait till the end. Don't wait till the very end. Like, wait a minute, where'd that four come from? How'd you get that three? Now, ask it right away as we go, all right? Don't be afraid to stop us. First thing first, find the slope. Example one says, we're going to write the equation of a line through 0, 3, and negative 4, negative 1. Well, our first step here is to find the slope. So if you're ready, go ahead and find the slope to those two points. So some of you are still finishing up there. Hopefully you did negative 1 minus 3 and negative 4 minus 0. And if you were careful and did it correctly, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 0 is negative 4. Any number on top of itself in a fraction is just 1. So our m value here is 1. And that's pretty important. All right. Make a note of that. M is 1. It's really important. Any questions on that part right there? Find the slope. Or was that really easy? That was too easy, right? You want more. You'll get more today. Today you're going to get some more. Use y equals mx plus b to find b. Uh, this is where it gets tricky. We're going to use the equation. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 variables or 4 letters. We're going to put numbers in here here, and here, for y, for m, and for x. Now, can somebody tell me, where am I probably going to get, well, we found our m value already. Where am I going to get a y value from? Using number. What number am I going to use? Four. Is it 
Is that a Y value? You're close. We're looking in the right spot. The Y. Three. Three. Negative one. Negative one. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we have two Y values. We can use a negative one here, right? <laughs> or we can use a three. Oh, yeah. That's and when it comes time for an X, where can we pull X values from? Zero or negative four. It's your choice. You get the same answer either way. All right? So let's start with our y value x plus b. y equals m x plus b. What y value do you want to use? Your choice. Minus one. Minus one? No. Let's use negative one. Just now. Equals. What value should I use for m? One. 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 We just found that, right? One. This multiplication right here, parentheses. What value for x? Minus four. Three. 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 Zero. 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 Minus four. Three. It's got to be the negative four. Oh, yeah. Because you chose this y value. Oh. If you choose that y value, you mm -hmm. must use this x value. Right use one pair, use the entire pair. So x is going to be negative four here, right? Yes, it is. Plus b. We don't know what b is yet, but we're going to know here in about ten seconds. Let's go ahead and simplify. What is 1 times negative 4? It's negative 4, hopefully you all knew that, plus b. This is where a lot of folks get stuck. They forgot how to solve an equation. How do I solve that equation for b? What should I do? Add, add, add what? Add 4. Negative 4. I mean, plus add, 4. Plus yes. The opposite of a negative 4? Plus 4. Is a positive 4 on both sides. <coughs> That is how you get that done pretty quickly. What's negative 1 plus 4? Three. 3. It's 3. 3 equals B. Step 2 is complete. The hard part is done if you ask me. Tell me if I'm wrong here. We're going to write the equation in the form of Y equals MX plus B. However, in this part, we are only putting numbers in or values in for M and for B. We're going to leave Y and X as variables or as letters, which is putting values in for M and for B. So what is going to be my equation here? Well, it's going to start off with Y equals. What's the rest going to be? What's M? 1, one X. One. How do I write 1X? Yes. Just X. That's 1X. Remember, the slope really is there. That 1 is there. But we don't write one as we just write the x. And then what's b? Plus three. Plus three. Y equals x plus three. And there's your equation. Is that a long problem? Yes. All right, what you do a few of them? It's very quick. I'm stupid. I didn't throw a sign like that. Uh, I am so sorry. It is long. I know. Hopefully, you have the stomach for one more. you have a question? Yes. Um, actually, you are already given x on the sum. So, why don't we write x by numbers and this time again? Why right here? X plus two? Right here? Why are, we, why are we not putting numbers in right here? No, the last one that over there. Yes. Um, x is already on the zero and negative four on the top. For example, the step one uh -huh. is already given, and why would we still write only x, not the number? Oh, because the one. slope here is 1, Yes. but we don't write 1x in algebra. Oh, okay. We just write x. That's a also, that means if um, this, the step one is, uh, we got to resolve by 4 or something like that? Yeah, something like 3 fourths, for example, was your answer? Yes. It'd be 3 fourths x. Oh, okay, thank you. That's a good question. I like that. Awesome. Any other questions there before we try one more? All right, I'm going to hit you with one more. All right? Uh, yay. And uh, this eraser leaves me every day. I don't make anybody run away or anything. Let's just do one more. Though. 0, 2, and 1, 
negative 3. What should I do first here? Combine. Combine 3, negative 3 with 2. Oh, so you put x, 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 x. What, you want to label it first? Yeah, label it first. x, y, x. Negative 3 minus 2. 1, negative minus 0. Very good. That's worth 9. What was negative 3 minus 2? That's a good question. Am I changing signs right here? Who said no? Right here. And why not? You don't know? Because it's not a negative 2. Yeah, it's a positive 2, so we don't have to change any signs at all. Awesome. Adam. You're nervous with the right answer. What's negative 3 minus 2? Negative 5. Negative 5. Very good. 1 minus 0? One. You had one one dollar. You spent nothing. What is? Will this divide even? Will negative five divide by one? Yeah. What is negative five divided by one? Five. Negative five. It's negative five. This is like the most improved table. You guys have come a long way. Nice job. I'm being, I'm, being, I'm being very serious. Nice job. Equals m. So m is negative five, right? Here we go. Step one is done. Start part two. Y is mx plus b. Everybody's favorite part. Y equals mx plus b. What value would you like to use for y today? What looks easier to you? I think two looks easier too. That looks nice and easy. Two equals. What about for m? Five. Nine. Nine. It's five. We gotta use the negative five. Oh, it is negative five, isn't it? A positive five will throw your whole answer off. You do this, all this work and get the problem wrong. That'd be really frustrating. What about for x? Zero. Zero. It's got to be the zero. Can I use one? No. No. I got to use. I got to roll with this zero here. Plus b. That's work. There we go. Let's simplify. What's negative five times zero? Negative zero. Negative zero. Negative five. Zero. Oh. Zero. It's just zero. Anything times zero is zero. It's important to remember that. Negative zero. Zero plus b. Well, the good news is that this zero right here means nothing. So we just take them out. All right. Two equals b. Part two is done. I checked the same step three times already. Now we're gonna write the equation. Y equals m x plus b. But remember. We're only putting values in for m and b. What's the equation? Y equals, say it loud. 2, negative 5. Now, wait, hold on now. Wait a minute, hold on now. Let's slow down. 2x plus 3. Wait, hold on now. Y equals mx. What's m? Minus 5. It's negative 5. X. What is it? 2 plus 2. And now we're all set to graph that if we need to. But we're not graphing them, we're just writing the equation today. Alright, now, I think you all received a nice stapled packet yesterday. No. If you did not, we got plenty of examples for you to try. Uh, you can start out with these, I will hand you the study guide. That's a pretty nice set of structured notes there. What am I doing to do? Shortly, uh, 
These are actually pretty busy for some time now. I don't expect them all ten to be done today in class. They take a few minutes, as you can see. Even when you're good and you're fast, they take a second to do. They really take a minute. And little mistakes cause big problems in these issues. Uh, you don't want to spend three or four minutes on this and get it wrong. That's just really frustrating. And if you're taking a test at the ECA, for example, which is a time test, you don't want to waste time with something wrong. So be very careful there. If you really are struggling with uh, some of the multiplication, you really are having trouble today, uh, I would say try it and check it with a calculator if you need to afterwards. Uh, Jose and I, we're more than happy to assist you. We don't expect you to have it totally down today. Although you should be able to get started, right? The slope. Um, so, well, now, yes, all, it, yes, it takes, it takes all three steps. No, it takes all three steps. Takes one, two, and three. You can't leave anything out. Is that what you're asking? All three steps. You can't skip anything. It's a pain, yes, I know. Yes, I know. Look at this. So you look pretty good yesterday, like you knew what you were doing. Math was always something I liked. Did you? I was actually, um, so this year, last year I did trading on start on pre calculus before I knew. So this year I was going to be stuck in calculus, and then there was one other class I was going to take. I was basically focused on freshman year at college. <laughs> I was I was ready to go to high school. Well, you weren't the only one that's like that. A lot of people are like that. When it's like I'm ready. To go. I was I was done.
Thank you. 
six minutes left and um, really everybody's doing a pretty good job with this. And what I would say to you is this, if you can do this, you can do nearly anything in algebra one. This is a very challenging time, but I'm not lying or making that up to you. Uh, this is about as hard as it gets. Uh, so if you can do this, you should be very confident and uh, be able to do anything and get an A in this class or, or B or whatever it is you want. Uh, with that said, um, I think the last two minutes kind of wind down here. If you have any questions, make sure you let us know today before you leave. Don't go home today with a question. Go home able to do these on your own. That's the point. If you take these home and do seven or eight on your own. Right? So don't leave not knowing what's next. Make sure you know what to do next. What to do next. What to do next. It's time for me to stop talking. Make sure you know what to do next before you leave today. For me, either Jose or I, when you come in tomorrow, I'm going to give you... I don't know, a three question quiz over this, you can knock it out of the park. All right? Let us know. A little bit, yes. So, with that said, keep working. Uh, try to knock a few of these out tonight if you have time. If you just had enough, maybe in the morning. And uh, have a good evening. Oh, you're welcome. Every day's a pleasure. I'm so, I'm so glad you came back, actually. I'll be right.